from Daily Trust News Center. This on News R tonight. Supreme Court reserves judgment on 2022 Electoral Act. Smooth sail for incumbent APC governors in party primaries. Bandits kill three Niger State PDP delegates. Away from Nigeria, Russian forces shell dozens of towns in Donbass region. Hello and welcome to the News Hour on Trust Television. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. And now the news in details. The Supreme Court on Thursday reserved judgment in the suit filed by President Muhammad Buhari and Attorney General of the Federation Abu Bakr Malami to void provisions of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2022. On May 19, the Apex Court admitted an application filed by River State to be joined in the suit. Justice Musa Datijo, who led the seven-member panel of justices of the Apex Court, allowed the joinder application that Rivers brought through the Speaker of its House of Assembly and its Attorney General and adjourned the hearing on the suit until May 26. President Buhari and Malami filed a suit at the Supreme Court seeking an interpretation of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Amendment Act 2022. Upon further review, we understood that uh, this matter is coming as uh, invoking the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, and that has that has a stipulation that is provided for. It has a niche upon the persons who can bring such actions. So we, we realized it is not. Uh, we are not part of those persons who the Constitution has provided and the Supreme Court Original Jurisdiction Act has provided for. So the essence of us withdrawing is for, we've seen that parties like River State have joined and other parties have joined. They are also included in the Original, original Jurisdiction Act. So with that, our withdrawal is just for an easement in, in the dispensation of the case. We as MBA, we have done our duty to Nigerians, which is our obligation to ensure that um, we protect the rule of law in Nigeria. What we have done today is that in the discussion of this matter that our first Nigerians, at least the Nigerian view should be had. Oh, is that the appeal has been argued yeah. and uh, the court has adjourned to such a time that they will notify us. At this point, we don't know when the judgment will be given. But I think that uh, the matters are very straightforward, as you all heard while you were inside the courtroom. So I do not really come out to go and start arguing my case before the press. You don't um, jump. When the decision comes, then you decide what to do with it. And in any event, don't forget the decision or the uh, declaration that the president is uh, seeking. It's not for his own personal uh, interest. He's not contesting any election. So, and also, it is for also for the future. It's for both for the present and for the future. So, but when we get to that bridge, we will cross it. You, any party can bring any issues, any objection. It is the duty of the court to look at it and to quickly. And in that light, let me use this opportunity to, to salute the courage of the Supreme Court for taking and placing premium in this matter. This is the matter that started about a week or two weeks ago. And you can see the dedication to duty to ensure that this matter is quickly dispensed with. I'm very sure in the next few days, few weeks, though I'm not, I'm not predicting them, we will certainly get to the end of this matter. Suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police Abakari has filed a motion requesting the court to revisit his bail application. The application for the review dated May 12, 2022, was filed by his counsel, Onyechi Ikbazu, at a federal high court sitting in Abuja. He said it is predicated on the grounds that Abakari's life is under threat. The senior lawyer appealed to the court to consider the bail in the interest of justice and to save his client's life from being cut short. However, the prosecution counsel, Joseph Mbona, opposed the application on the grounds that he had not been served a copy of the application, but only got a wind of it in the open court. Justice Emeka Mwite adjourned the case till June 14, 
to enable parties to exchange necessary court processes. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Correctional Service has dismissed reports that the life of Abakari, the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, is in danger in its custodial facility in Kuje, Abuja. Reports emerge that Kari nearly got murdered by some aggrieved inmates who allegedly accused him of taking bribes from them when he was in active service while still going ahead to prosecute them. However, the Controller General of Corrections, Haliru Nababa, said that reports of a threat to Kari's life were fake news. In a statement signed on behalf of the CG by the National Public Relations Officer of the service, Francis Enobore, the service described the story as false, reckless and mischievous. Similarly, the spokesperson for the Correctional Service FCT Command, Humpre Chukwedo, said that there is no truth in the reports, insisting that there was no threat to carry his life in the custodial facility. Now, the absence of trial judge at an upper Sharia High Court sitting at Kofarukudu stalled hearing in the case of Abdul Jabbar Kabara. Spokesman to Sharia Court Ado Fage told journalists on Thursday that the judge's absence is on the grounds of ill health. This is the first time the court has not sat since the arraignment of the suspect on July 16, 2022, after he was accused of blasphemous statements against Prophet Muhammad, an action capable of inciting public outrage. According to Ado, the case has been adjourned to June 2, 2022. Recall that in the previous session, the court ordered the provision of legal representation for Abdul Jabbar from the Legal Aid Council after his lawyers quit the case on three occasions. And now to political stories. Political thugs on Thursday invaded the All Progressives Congress stakeholders meeting in Jalingo, the Taraba state capital. The meeting, which was attended by six governorship aspirants, was halted by the invasion. The commissioner of police, who confirmed the incident, said that the police restored sanity immediately it received an emergency call from the party state chairman that their lives were under threat. The chairman of the All Progressive Congress Electoral Committee, Lawrence Onochuku, said his committee has been directed to conduct direct primaries. This development has polarized the stakeholders who had earlier been told that the primaries will be indirect. Now, 15 incumbent APC governors may have a smooth sail to emerge as governorship candidates in their respective states. Here are the results officially declared from the states. The primaries, which had its share of political drama, with some aspirants working out and some condemning the process, have produced winners in several states. Governor Babajide Songwolu won in Lagos State after two other aspirants, former Commissioner of Energy, Wale Oluo, and former permanent secretary from the Minister of Energy, Mustafa Olorun Femi, were not cleared for the primary. The story is the same in Ogun State, where Governor Dakbo Abiodun won by 1,168 votes to defeat five other aspirants. However, two of the aspirants, Adekule Akinlade and B. Otegbeye, had rejected the chairmanship of the election committee and passed a vote of no confidence on the chairman of governorship election primaries. Former national caretaker of the APC, Mayimbala Buni, came up triumphant in Yobe State, winning the party ticket with 805 out of 890 votes. Gombe State Governor Inua Yahya has always been declared winner of the governorship primary election of all Progressive Congress APC for the 2023 general elections. 563 delegates elected Governor Inwa in a voice note as the only governorship aspirant of the APC for the 2023 general election. While in Zamfara, Governor Bello Mohammed, like his counterparts, emerged the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC in Zamfara State. He pulled 733 votes to emerge as the winner of the primary election. Chief Ikechi Emenike emerged winner in Abia State. MNEK, an economist, is the chairman and chief executive of Development Resources Limited. He pulled 672 votes to defeat others in the race. 
pronounced Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum, who was sole aspirant, has been declared winner of the APC governorship primaries ahead of the forthcoming general elections in 2023. Ahead of the primaries, MNEK was jostling for the APC's governorship ticket in the state with six other aspirants. APC governorship primary in Kaduna State is not concluded as balloting is ongoing at Sheo Yaradua Sports Complex. Meanwhile, governorship primaries across some states of the Federation by the People's Democratic Party have thrown up mixed fortunes for aspirants. Some of those that emerged as candidates were expected, while others were a complete surprise. Kane De Amodu takes a look at the emerging picture of how the battle for the governorship ticket will look in states. I will bring you details of that in our subsequent bulletins. But bandits have reportedly killed three delegates in the governorship primaries of the People Democratic Party from Mariga local government area of Niger State. The chairman of the electoral committee and deputy governor of Belsa State, Lawrence Erujakbo, announced this at the state PDP secretariat venue of the primaries in Mina. The delegates were said to have been killed on Wednesday while returning to Mariga after the party postponed the primaries due to a protest by some of the aspirants who expressed reservation with the delegates list. Delegates were thereafter asked to bring their means of identification to, the, to, the, to authenticate their names while the primaries was shifted to Thursday. Those who lost their lives in the incident were substituted to complete the number of delegates from the local government. Youths in Kongolom border town of Mayadwa local government area of Katsina State have protested the killing of Abdurrahman Amadou by officials of border drill of the Nigeria Customs Service. Worried by the incessant killings of residents of Kongolom town, that the youths say that they will no longer fold their arms and watch customs operatives kill innocent people. Abdullahi Yamadi has the details. In a state of mourning, residents of Kongolam border town in Meadwa local government area of Kasna State claimed that Abdurrahman Amadou was shot by an official of border drill on Friday. The victim was conveyed to Federal Medical Center Kazana, where he was confirmed dead on Sunday. The deceased is my biological son. I feel cheated. He is innocent and the breadwinner of the family. I will never forgive these killers and need the assistance of all stakeholders in ensuring justice. Residents claim Abdurrahman Amadou is the third person in his family to be eliminated by customs operatives, while the unfortunate incident brings the number of those killed in incidents like this to 90. The two killed from this family are my grandsons, their left wives and children, which I must take their responsibilities. And as you can see, I am old and getting older by the day. I need justice, no more, no less. Worried by the killings, some angry youth went on rampage, burning down some huts erected by security personnel at the border town. However, normalcy was restored following the intervention of the elders, the Galadi Mandora, district head of Meadwa, with the support of police in the area. There were some structures here burnt down by some angry youth following the killing of one of them by the operatives of border drill. It is high time to stop these killings. The victim was not in possession of anything illegal. I can confirm to you that he is innocent. While commiserating with the family of the deceased, officials of Human Rights Network of Nigeria, Kazuna State, condemned the killers and promised to take the matter up with the Nigeria Customs Service. This is an institutional failure. Something very urgent needs to be done to stop this madness, at least for peace to reign in Kongolom border town. Enough is enough. A senior customs officer in Kazuna 
who claimed anonymity, told Trust Television News that the border drill operatives are directly answerable to the Office of the National Security Advisor. As such, the area command should not be held responsible for the killings. There are speculations that hundreds of people have been killed all in an attempt by customs officials to stop smuggling, especially along Kongolom Jibia corridors. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. Now, some hoodlums said to be enforcing the sit-at-home order by the indigenous people of Biafra on Thursday set a motorcycle and a tricycle popularly known as Keke ablaze in Osuka, Inugu State. The incident, which happened in the early hours of the day, took place at Umakashi, Umakashi Road by the building materials market along Urban Girls Secondary School in Suka threw residents around the area into confusion and palpable fear. Shops, business centers, motor parks, banks, markets, and schools within Nsuka town did not open for the day's business. IPOP had earlier cancelled the Thursday sit-at-home order through a statement issued on Wednesday by their media and publicity secretary, Ima Powerful, following the adjournment of Namdi Kano's case to June 28, 2022. In the meantime, Governor Charles Soludo of Anambra State has imposed a dusk to dawn curfew for commercial motorcycle riders, shuttle buses and tricycle riders in eight local government areas of the state, effective from Monday, 30th of May, 2022. Speaking during a statewide radio and television broadcast, Governor Soludo said security is foundational in the efforts of his administration to enthrone a livable and prosperous state. The local government areas include Aguata, Hiala, Ekusigo, Newi North and South, Ogbaru, as well as Orumba North and South. Governor Soludo, who stressed that the directive will be reviewed in a fortnight, ordered security officials to begin immediate enforcement of the directive, which is meant to last from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sixth day of May, a 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew is hereby placed on motorcycles or cada tricycles, uh, keke, and shuttle buses in the following eight local governments: Aguata, Ihial, Epusigo, Newi North, Newi South, Obaru, Orumba North, and South local governments until further notice. We will review this and say whether we then extend it to the rest of the state. But let's start with this, um, if you like, um, uh, the various, the red local governments. Until further notice also, motorcycles, KK and shuttle buses are banned from operating in these local governments on Mondays until the seat at home completely stops. The Jamaatu Nasser Islam has said that it has had enough of the senseless killings of innocent people by unknown gunmen. JNI, in a statement by its Secretary General Khalid Abubakar Aliu, condemned what it described as the barbaric and unprovoked killing of one Harira Jibrin, a pregnant woman with four of her children at Isulo in Orumba North local government area of Anambra State. JNI, however, stressed that the legacy of the so-called unknown gunmen is no longer tenable, saying that they are known but ignored. The organization commiserated with the families of the victims of serial killings and abductions in Nigeria and implored the federal government to live up to its responsibility of protecting lives. The governor of Zamfara State, Bello Mohammed, has called on military to reposition themselves in the fight against banditry. The governor was speaking when he played host to participants of the Army War College of Nigeria who were on a study visit to Operation Hadar and Daji in the state. The report. The governor said if the military adopts total proactive measures, the issue of banditry in the state will soon become a history. He, however, acknowledged that military is overstretched and also in need of modern equipment as the military is said to be ill-equipped. He advised the retired military officers be re-engaged into the service 
while the government must not relent in its pursuit for peace and unity. He also said that his administration has seen the commendable efforts of the military in the state over the years and assured that he will continue to give his utmost support to their operation until peace is restored in the state. Our own as a leader is just to be praying for all of you to succeed on the fight of all the criminal activities in Nigeria and to support you in any way that is possible. We met as a governors and uh, security chiefs of the country. And we discussed the modalities and the best way to tackle the issues of insecurity that we have with Mr. President, which we governors have to help and get some equipment, the modern equipment for the Nigerian Army and other security agencies. Earlier, the leader of the team, Major General Babalola Alabi, commended Governor Matawali for the support he rendered to operating officers in the state. He reiterated the commitment of the military in ending all security challenges bedeviling the country. It has been our observation as a college that we need to uh, adopt a more comprehensive approach in our conduct of operation that informs the purpose of the team of this visit so that we see how the entire society, the government, other elements of national power will complement the military effort so that we can have uh, lasting peace so that our operations can be more effective. The team honored Governor Matawali with an award of excellence in supporting military operations in the state. You're watching the news hour uh, on Trust Television. Coming up shortly. How retiree takes to wood chopping to survive. Details and more after the break. Join us again. Every patriotic Nigerian should hear this. Any politician who means well for the people will never allow themselves or their supporters to engage in any vile and destructive activities. No politician who truly wants to serve the people and develop the nation will encourage his followers to destroy properties or take human lives before, during or after the elections. The Nigerian public must watch out for these traits and isolate any politician who encourages supporters to engage in violence. No genuine politician or patriot will cause trouble and seek to destroy the very society which they aspire to lead or develop. Politicians who have the good of the people at heart will not allow themselves or their followers to engage in violence, destruction of properties, and then taking of lives. Be vigilant. By their words, you shall know them. Shun violence. Stay away from politicians who want you to do so. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Welcome back. This is the News Hour on Trust Television. A reminder of our top stories again. Supreme Court reserves judgment on 2022 Electoral Act. Now, moving on, a former member of the House of Representatives and candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2019 general election, Mohammed Isa Ashiru has won the governorship ticket of the PDP in the just-concluded primary election. Ashiru, who got 414 votes, beat five other contenders with a wide margin to emerge winner. The report. Six contenders participated in the keenly contested election. Their former Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Sani Sidi, who came second with 260 votes. 
former governor of the state Mukhtar Ramalan Yeru, who polled 28 votes, Sani Abbas, who polled 15 votes, Haruna Said Kajuru, who got 11 votes, and Senator Shehu Sani, who got two votes. Honorable Isa Hashim, 400. In his acceptance speech, the winner of the primary election, Isa Ashuru, who polled 414 votes, says the PDP will rescue Kaduna State from the misrule of the APC. Our collective genuine desire for the rescue of our state from the misrule of the APC, which has caused untold hardship to the people of the state, as evident in the terrible insecurity, joblessness, and the resultant extreme poverty should continuously motivate all of us to work for the success of our party during the next general election. Earlier, the chairman of the PDP in Kaduna State, Felix Hyatt, said the delay experienced before the commencement of the primaries was to ensure that the exercise met the requirements of the law in order to avoid litigation. It's a, it's a process. Election is a process. And we want to be very thorough. We don't want to leave room for anybody to have a reason to complain. We are doing accreditation. And you can see the accreditation is not taking place here. It's taking place in a different venue. And those who have been accredited, they have conveyed in a vehicle and brought here. And uh, every aspirant is having an agent there at the accreditation center. So once they do it, they will bring it there. And the process of accreditation is cumbersome if you want to do a thorough job that you will not attract unnecessary litigations. Lami Sadiq for Trust TV News. Staying with political matters, Governor Ahmadu Umaru Fintiri of Adama State has emerged the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the 2023 general elections in the state. Announcing the result, the chairman of the PDP Electoral Committee, Gibbon Katafs, said a total of 668 delegates were accredited for the exercise, out of which five were voided votes. In his acceptance speech, Governor Umaru Fintiri expressed appreciation to the PDP delegates and stakeholders for the mandate given to him to fly the flag of the party in the years in the next year's elections. He used the forum to call on all Adama delegates and people to support and ensure that former Vice President Atiku Abubakar emerges presidential flag bearer of the PDP in the next year's election. The former Vice President Atiku Abubakar expressed appreciation to the delegates for giving the governor the ticket to contest for a second tenure. Governor Fintiri was the sole candidate that contested at the PDP gubernatorial primary held at Mahmoud Ribadu Square. And transparent. Total number of ballot papers 668. 668 ballot papers. All the ballot papers returned are 668 valid votes. Out of the 668, I will count only the void vote, voided votes. One, two, three, four, five. Five voided votes out of 668. Distinguished delegates, party leaders and elders, I thank you all for this overwhelming mandate to fly the flag of a great party once again to victory. Well, I expect at the end of the day, our candidate, you know, Governor Omar Vintri will be declared the winner. And uh, he's the sole candidate, so we expect uh, just to commence uh, campaigns straight ahead. Well, I expect also another transparent and credible process, you know, at the national level. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly, Sheriff Oborevori, has emerged winner of the just-concluded PDP governorship primary election. The event, which took place at the Stephen Keshi Stadium, Asaba, saw Sheriff poll 590 votes out of the 821 valid votes cast. Former Chief of Staff to the former President, David Edeve, 
got 113 votes, while Senator James Manga pulled 83 votes. Now, one important determinant of success in business is location. This is because access to markets will ensure that goods and services get to the final consumers with ease in this politically heightened period. Thus, positioning your business close to head offices of political parties guarantee better patronage. Chamong Dabeng finds out more. As political activities gather momentum, especially with primaries and other consultation, business activities around such gatherings also get a boost. Sectors like transport, hospitality and print are believed to be the highest beneficiaries of the election season. However, are these benefits trickling down to the smaller traders plying their trade close to party offices? Before, customer know they come like this, too. but by now, by the grace of God, they come small, small, partly before. Yes, they help me now, so ah. as the people, they come out now, they help me partly before. Mm -hmm. So before, people know they look like this, but now, anyhow, it better part the before. Since the political, um, the, politi the political service has uh, changed, so we start this business, and we, d we couldn't get some more customers again and the, the little ones that they come and we sell it for them, they buy. That is how we get small, small and improve. So. I, have, like, I have like more than 500 people. In a day? Yeah. But you say less than 20 above, not like, not like before again. Because everything is expensive. We add money, we add money some Say no money to buy food, nothing like as Though the responses are slightly mixed, the issue of inflation is obviously a barrier to the progress of small businesses as it affects the purchasing power of the customers. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. A 60 year old retiree, Husseini Yakubu, has taken to wood chopping for survival due to unpaid retirement benefits after 35 years of service. Yakubu was a typist with the Adama State Urban Planning and Development Service. Salis Lawan has the details of that report. Wood logging for a 60 year old. This is ordinarily a no no. But for Yakubu, this is the only option available for him to eat out a living. After his routine morning calls and family time, he treks over two kilometers to meet potential customers that will patronize him at the end of the day. Upon arrival, negotiations start. An agreement is reached. It is draining for his age, but this is the only available option for him. After delivering on his tax, Husseini receives the day's income. He tells Trust TV how long he has been into this trade. There is no enough time. This trade of mine is hard. Because sometimes I only used to get 1,000 naira, 500 naira, or 200 naira, with some days with no kobo. And you know how family responsibility is. But usually, what I used to tell my family is that that's how God plans things. At the close of every day's work, he retires home to pens in his body. Definitely I'm doing this trade, but it's very hard. Sometimes the client will tell me they don't make even a penny. That's how I will go empty-handed. 
I only depends on God. And I plead with my family and find ways to get food to eat. He believes that if government pays his pension and gratuity, he will not be subjected to this kind of hard labor. From Yola, Salis Lawan, Trust TV News. Quite heart rendering there. The Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria has raised alarm over the refusal of some state governments to settle several months of salary and other emoluments owed workers, especially Abia and Ondo State. The president of the association, Victor Makonjola, who read the communique issued after the NEC meeting in Potakot, River State, stated that there is the need to increase retirement age of health workers as part of efforts to stop mass exodus of Nigerian doctors to other countries. Makonjola called on government at all levels to increase funding for health care, especially the secondary level, and encourage them to patronize and prioritize allocation of resources for infrastructure and human capital development. About almost 500 specialists leaving the country in the past two years. We are already beginning to fill the burden of this on those who are still in the system. And if all these steps we mentioned earlier, increasing payment, increasing remuneration of our clinical lecturers is not done, if we do not increase the retirement age of consultants in the system, more people are bound to leave the system. And we're facing an imminent collapse uh, with regards to specialist care in the country. All right, we'll take a short break. And then when we come back, the news are continuous. Please stay with us. Daily, we bring you updates around politics. People like you who are very young, you have no future. Anybody now who is 30 years, if what is happening to the continues, by the time you are 60, you will have no country. The DPO of a particular unit does not have to wait until the commissioner tells him what to do within his jurisdiction. We have political parties on the ground. Some of them have been there for years. Mm. But they themselves, in their own sober moments, they know that this country is not the one they are expecting to run. Policy and governance. Are you saying the NBS what? is lying? I'm saying to you very clearly mm. that the NBS has a serious problem with accurate data till today. The fifth assembly, as well as the seventh assembly, uh, they are unattempted, we are unproductive. Emergence of the Taliban has simply emboldened terror groups globally. There is a lot of attention with regards to security developments in Nigeria. On daily politics, we interrogate issues, holding the actors to account, bearing in mind all the sides. We heard that in some places now, people have to go and pay tax, not to the local government, not to the state but to criminals. Nobody can come to your house and kidnap you without information. If this country is bleeding, it is bleeding because we have failed to educate our young.
Welcome back. You're watching the news on uh, Trust Television. And now moving on. Bean cake, popularly known as Kose in Hausa language, is a common breakfast in Nigeria. It is a business that does not require a lot of capital, but pays well, according to Amin Ibrahim, who sells Kose in Joss Plateau State. Trust TV reports on how Amina built two houses from the profit she made in the business. The report. The 70-year-old said, it is always wise to appreciate and be determined in all little things we do. She said she is so thankful how her business turned out to be. I have been in this business for the past 40 years. I went from one point to the other to sell bean cake and finally I'm here in front of my house. Whatever I got as profit, I saved until the money was enough to buy a house. Instead of buying a house, I rather bought a land and built it myself. Years later, I saved again from the profit and bought another house. The cake bean seller said the business is also helping her to take care of her family since the demise of her husband. We eat and clothe from the profit. Allah has blessed the business. We are thankful to him for making it possible. Jamila Abdullahi is one of the customers of the woman who has been patronizing her for more than 20 years. I have been buying Akara from her for the past 20 years. Akara is unique because she doesn't mix it with Gary or any other thing to make profit. It is yummy. And now to some more business. Retailers and consumers of liquefied petroleum gas, also known as cooking gas, have decried the hike in the price of the product across the country. They made their views known in separate interviews in Lagos following the increase in the price of cooking gas within the last one month. Consumers have been struggling with the high cost of cooking gas due to the global supply challenges, high international prices, limited availability, of foreign exchange and high exchange rate. The price of a 12.5 kg cylinder has increased from about 8,400 naira to 9,500 naira in Lagos, Abuja, Portakot and Environs and 10,000 naira in other parts of the country. Also, Nigeria Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association said Nigeria consumed a total of 1.2 metric tons of LPG in 2021 with about 60% imported into the country by marketers. The National Bureau of Statistics is set to collaborate with the Central Bank of Nigeria on a household survey for Nigerians. The quarterly exercise is to, among other things, provide accurate data on the behavior of Nigerians vis-a-vis -vis their economic lives. Chamung Dabeng has the details. The National Bureau of Statistics has officially kicked off a partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria on the National Integrated Household Survey. The Statistician General of the Federation, Semio Adeniro, disclosed this on Thursday at the NBS headquarters in Abuja. According to the SGF, the survey is expected to be conducted on a quarterly basis with the primary objective of providing reliable estimates on household income and expenditure, as well as insights into their economic behavior and financial situation. Specifically, the scope of the survey covers the educational background and status of the household members, their consumption and expenditure profiles, household assets and properties, access to financial services and credit constraints, incomes and savings, as well as information on household enterprises and money. This uh, collaboration is well thought of, well designed international standard so that even if there's any comparability with any other country and we don't so we would like to see our in order to mark us with other uh, rest of the world and uh, i want to use this uh, this medium i want to appeal to the households that will be visited because we are going to visit over 33,000 households across the nation I want to appeal to these households that will be visited by our field officers to give them the maximum cooperation they need in terms of soliciting those information. 
Adeni Raw further stated that since the data will be collected electronically and communicated in real time, technology will play a crucial role in the process in order to reduce errors, increase quality and speed of the process. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. We'll now take a short break. The news are continuous after this timeout. Please stay with us. All right, thank you for staying with us. Now, moving on. Governorship primaries across some states of the Federation by the People's Democratic Party have thrown up mixed fortunes for aspirants. Some of those that emerged as candidates were expected, while others were a complete surprise. Kainde Amodu takes a look at the emerging picture of how the battle for the governorship ticket will look in states. Kano is one of the states steeped in politics where surprises spring up every political season. The ruling All Progressives Congress has its issues with many members of a faction of the party moving into the newly rejigged new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. Across the river, the People's Democratic Party has issues. Two factions of the party produced two candidates, Muhammad Abacha and Sadiq Wali, son of elder statesman Aminu Wali. In Kaduna, former member of the House of Representatives and candidate of the PDP in the 2019 general elections, Isa Ashiro won the ticket of the PDP. A former executive director of the First Bank, Northern Zone, Dauda Lawal, emerged a candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Zamfara State. Three other aspirants had withdrawn for the exercise few minutes into the process, citing irregularities and substitution of national delegates. In Gombe State, 328 delegates from 114 wards, 11 local government areas and 11 national delegates voted in primaries which saw Mohamed Bardi emerge as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party. There is no surprise that in Adama State, incumbent Amadou Fintri was returned unopposed as candidate, while his counterpart in Oyo State, Sheyi Makinde, soundly trounced his opponent in the primaries. These results from the People's Democratic Party primaries show an opposition party that has shown up for work. But will that be enough to wrest power from the All Progressives Congress? The, the fact that money and paramount power of incumbents still play so much role in the determination of whomsoever emerges at our uh, primaries and at various levels of elections demonstrated the fact that we are not growing our electoral democracy and this is seriously uh, negating our developmental democracy. A school of thought believes as a fallout of the primaries there are quite a number of contestants that will move to other parties. They may likely, we may likely have a kind of a result where many people that uh, the enfranchised or consider themselves to have been so do, uh, done to, we, we, we move out of the party. Uh, that cannot be uh, unexpected. You have seen that even Peter will be, without getting to the real primary, have pulled out from PDP and things of that nature. So Now, while that may not be new in the Nigerian political system, the slowly growing influence of alternate political platforms may spring up surprise in 2023. By the 4th of June, a clear picture of the character of the new leadership in 2023 at all tiers of government will slowly start to emerge. Kainde Amodu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari on Thursday left Abuja for Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, to participate in the African Union Extraordinary Session of Assembly of Heads of State and Government with special focus on security. Presidential spokesman Garbashe, who in a statement said that three-day summit 
which will hold on May 26th, 28th, will also focus on humanitarian challenges in Africa with related issues on migration, refugees, returnees, and internally displaced persons. He said that African leaders will look at terrorism and unconstitutional change of government with attendant spiraling effects on human rights and economies at the summit. Shehu said that President Muhammadu Buhari will join other heads of state and government to deliberate on humanitarian challenges, hopes and challenges in Africa and participate in the adoption of the Assembly Declaration on Humanitarian Issues. Now, away from Nigeria, Ukraine's military says Russian forces have shelled more than 40 towns in eastern Donbas region, threatening to shut off the last main escape route for civilians trapped in the path of their invasion. Reports say that at least four civilians were killed and several were wounded in Russian shelling of the city of Kharkiv in northeastern Ukraine. The Kremlin said on Thursday that Moscow expected Kyiv to meet its demands, adding that Ukraine needed to have an awareness of the situation for peace talks to take place. Moscow is demanding that Ukraine acknowledge Crimea as Russian territory and recognize breakaway Russian-backed parts of eastern Ukraine as independent states, among other demands. Ukraine categorically disagrees with Russia's claims. WHO member states on Thursday condemned Russia's war in Ukraine and attacks on health care facilities in a resolution overwhelmingly adopted. The resolution carried by 88 votes to 12 at the World Health Organization's annual assembly did not impose any sanctions on Russia but underlined Moscow's isolation on the international stage in yet another global forum. Ukrainian Ambassador Yehenia Felikpenko said that February 24th full-scale Russian invasion had triggered a huge health and humanitarian crisis in and outside the country. The resolution was brought by Ukraine and co-sponsored by countries including the United States, Britain, Japan, Turkey and the European Union except Hungary. Of the 194 who uh, of the 194 WHO member states, 183 had the right to vote. 88 voted in favor and 12 against, with 53 abstentions and 30 countries absent. It also urged Russia to respect and protect all medical and humanitarian personnel, as well as the sick and wounded, in line with international law. Now for sports updates, let's take a look at this package as put together by our sports correspondent, Adeni Adishafe. Four teams have qualified for the final round of the 2022 Nigeria B Soccer League at the conclusion of the third round in Lagos. Defending champions, Kebi B Soccer Club, are joined in the Super 4 race by Smart City B Soccer Club, Badagri Warriors B Soccer Club and Kada B Soccer Club. 300 goals were scored in 49 matches in the four-month-long league, which kicked off in Quara earlier in February with 10 teams. Second round was held in Kebi while the third round took place in the historic city of Badagri Waterfall. Front. Kada and Smart City qualify from Group A and defending champions Kebi in Group B. The third run was the decider for which team would pick the final ticket between Quara and home team Badagri Warriors with a comfortable 4 0 win for the Coastal Boys from Badagri over Quara in the last match of the third round. The stake is now set for the Super 4 schedule for Kaduna in June, where the champions of 2022 Nigerian B Soccer League will emerge. That's Sport News. I am Adeni Ajishafe. And that's a wrap on Trust News Hour. Remember, you can watch more by clicking the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and also following us across all social media platforms. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching.